Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this Eurogroup uh, press conference. Mm -hmm. Today, we welcomed uh, Bruno Le Maire, the new finance minister, I should say, minister for the economy uh, of the French government. Uh, we look forward to working together with him. And we uh, had to say goodbye to Michael Noonan, who has announced that he will step down from his post. He could still be with us for the June meeting, but I didn't want to take the chances of missing his, um, his farewell. So we uh, paid attention and uh, our uh, thanks to him for all the work he's done for Ireland and the Eurozone. Uh, I will only speak about Greece because I think that's the only topic of interest uh, to you tonight. Um, we have made huge progress on the policy package uh, on which so much work has been done in the last uh, months and on which agreement had been reached between uh, Greece and the institutions. And uh, the Eurogroup, of course, welcomed that uh, very much. We are also very positive on the work done in Greece to implement those uh, agreed uh, measures and uh, reforms in prior actions. Commissioner will say more about that, but a lot of work has already been done uh, in uh, Greece by the Greek government, and they are committed to uh, continue that work as soon as possible uh, so that we can work towards that next disbursement before the summer. Um, having said that, on debt sustainability, we've always said that if there was agreement on uh, the second review, and uh, I think we're close to formally uh, close to formally closing the second review with a positive uh, outcome. If there is agreement on that, that would open up the debt discussion uh, to see where we are in terms of debt uh, sustainability. And this afternoon, this evening, we had a first discussion, in-depth discussion, on the topic of debt sustainability looking at very carefully at needs, options, constraints. Um, but at this point, we have not reached an overall agreement on that part uh, of our discussion. So in the coming weeks, we will continue our work on that um, and try to come to a definite conclusion in the next Eurogroup, which will be in three weeks' time. We will use that time well to work hard with the institutions and all member states uh, involved. Um, the Eurogroup today has made quite clear that it is uh, ready and prepared to specify further what could be envisaged if needed in terms of uh, debt relief. Uh, of course, there are two guiding principles for the Eurogroup. That is that it needs to be inside the package that we had already agreed in May 16, and that the final decision on what actually is needed and will be put in place in terms of debt relief will be taken at the end of the programme. The IMF today also made uh, clear that they welcome very much the uh, progress made, are uh, impressed by the uh, reforms and the work done by the Greeks and still stand ready to go to the board, uh, but they will also wait the uh, final discussion that we hope to have in three weeks' time in the Eurogroup on the issues uh, of debt. So overall, um, positive developments uh, from Greece, lots of work done tonight. Um, I think we are very close to that agreement, uh, but tonight we're unable to close uh, a possible gap between what could be done uh, and what uh, some of us had expected should be done or could be done. And we need to close that. Uh, by looking at uh, additional options or by adjusting our expectations. Uh, both uh, are possible and perhaps both should be done. And that, I think, will bring us for sure to a more positive uh, and definite positive uh, conclusion uh, next Eurogroup in June. Monsieur le Commissaire. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Bonsoir. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Bonsoir. Merci de votre patience. Cette journée a été longue. Nous n'avons pas conclu, en effet, mais je crois que le travail qui a été fait a été tout à fait utile et a marqué d'excellents progrès. Je vais commencer par vous résumer l'état des lieux en ce qui concerne la mise en œuvre des réformes agréées entre la Grèce et les institutions. Nous parlons 
d'un ensemble d'engagements qui est tout à fait considérable et même majeur, composé de mesures législatives, mais aussi d'autres types d'engagements qui ne requièrent pas tous des changements de loi. Et ce paquet, c'est ce qu'on appelle les actions prioritaires, les prior actions, c'est pas moins de 140 mesures qui sont concernées. Ce sont des réformes qui ne sont pas en plus des réformes mineures. Ce sont des réformes amples et profondes. Elles touchent à peu près tout le spectre, les politiques fiscales et sociales, les administrations publiques, les administrations fiscales, la stabilité financière, les marchés de produits, les industries de réseau et les privatisations. Ça inclut aussi, bien sûr, les mesures budgétaires additionnelles qui doivent entrer en vigueur à partir de 2019, ce qui représente au total tout de même 4 points de PIB, dont des mesures qui sont très difficiles et exigeantes, notamment concernant les retraites. Voilà ce qu'est le paysage des mesures qui devaient être prises. Où en sommes-nous Vous savez que le Parlement grec a voté la semaine dernière un projet de loi dit « omnibus » qui portaient sur 45 des actions prioritaires. D'autres ont été complétées en parallèle par des décisions administratives. Certaines sont encore en train d'être finalisées. Mais au total, j'ai pu informer l'Eurogroupe que 104 des 140 mesures pouvaient déjà être considérées comme complétées. Et en fait, aujourd'hui même, le nombre a encore augmenté. Car des progrès supplémentaires ont été faits, ce qui porte le total à environ 115 actions complétées. On doit donc constater que les autorités grecques ont pris leurs responsabilités, prennent leurs responsabilités, que la Grèce a fait des progrès très importants. Et je suis confiant dans cette mesure que nous serons vite à même de conclure que la Grèce a respecté la totalité des engagements, ce qui doit mener en effet, euh, à la conclusion de la revue, ce qui est aussi, euh, je pense, un des résultats souhaités de prochaine réunion de l'Eurogroupe, de la prochaine réunion de l'Eurogroupe. Donc, de, de très bons progrès euh, sur le champ des actions prioritaires euh, et euh, de ce qui est nécessaire pour conclure la revue. Euh, nous sommes vraiment là, dans la finalisation de ce travail et, et nous avons toute confiance je crois pouvoir me dire, nous, que cela sera fait. Maintenant, très brièvement sur la question de la dette que Yeroun a évoquée, il y a eu de longues discussions aujourd'hui dans plusieurs formats menés par Yeroun Dijsselbloem avec beaucoup de détermination et de minutie. Nous n'avons jamais eu en réalité une discussion sur la dette qui ait été aussi détaillée et aussi profonde. Et comme l'a dit le président de l'Eurogroupe, nous n'avons pas conclu, mais nous avons avancé, et même beaucoup avancé. Comme Yeroun l'a dit, nous allons maintenant travailler pour conclure un bon accord à notre prochaine réunion le 15 juin à Luxembourg. Je suis convaincu que les avancées faites, que les efforts dépensés ne sont pas et ne doivent pas être perdus. Ce sont des efforts qui constituent une très bonne base de départ, de départ pour notre prochaine rencontre. Et donc la Commission reste tout à fait disponible pour contribuer à ce travail et confiante dans les avancées que nous avons déjà réalisées et que nous allons encore réaliser dans les jours et semaines qui viennent pour aboutir à l'accord que chacun attend et qui aujourd'hui a fait de très bons progrès. Merci. Merci. Klaus Yes, thank you. Not much to add because I agree, of course. Indeed, there was progress, and I think it's really good for the Greek economy that there was agreement on the policy package because this can put Greece on a stronger growth path. And that was um, um, appreciated by all ministers. It also means that we do have a shared conditionality among all the four institutions which um, took a while to get there, but we reached that point. Obviously, we will continue to work on, on the debt measures on the basis of the May 2016 statement. Um, at the ESM, we are ready um, to make disbursements as soon as we have reached full agreement. Um, there's some time left to work on this, but not very much, because you all know 
that some debt service payments are coming up in July. Um, although we didn't have the full agreement on debt relief measures tonight, let me remind you that we are not starting from scratch here. In 2012, Greece um, already received unparalleled debt relief from both private creditors and official creditors. Private creditors accepted um, the largest nominal haircut in history, and the official side provided maturity extension, interest deferral, and reduction in fees and margins. And that added up to another NPV reduction of around 40%. So we are working with this behind us already and as a good basis. On top of that, as you know, since early this year at CSM, we are implementing the short-term debt measures that were already agreed by the Eurogroup um, in May last year. Thank you. Thank you. Your questions, please. Yes, ma'am. Please. Yes, ma'am. Maria Roni from Athens uh, News Agency. Uh, Mr. Dyserblum, when you entered this building this afternoon, you said that you are expecting a deal, but not the final deal. It looks as if there is no deal at all, not even for the conclusion of the second review. Why is that? And do you think there is uh, enough time until the 15th of June to find a, a comprehensive uh, deal on Greece, including the debt? Thank you. No, I think you need to, um, to be more specific. So I think that the formal conclusion of the second review uh, is very close. Uh, it's just a matter of finishing the last prior actions and the institutions uh, to do the last uh, checks uh, on that. And that could uh, open up the path for the disbursement. So that's one part of the deal. The second part is that um, I've always made clear that to have a full agreement on debt relief uh, is only going to come at the end of the program. That's always been absolutely clear. So what we've tried uh, today and what our goal is in three weeks' time is to give uh, more clarity on what that debt relief could look like if it is needed. Um, um, and that would give enough confidence also to the IMF to go to their board and to uh, formally step into the uh, uh, program. Um, as I said, uh, we've made a lot of progress on that. Uh, there are still lots of open issues and we've reduced them to give you one. We've had, uh, as you remember, a debate about the primary surplus going forward, what that should look like. There's now full agreement between everyone that the 3.5% uh, primary surplus should uh, remain uh, for five years, and after that, Greece should uh, um, stick to its uh, commitments under the Growth and Stability Pact. In other words, the uh, regular uh, fiscal rules would also apply uh, to Greece, which means uh, that they could go down, their primary surplus plus can then go down to uh, adhere to that. So there's agreement uh, on that. We also have uh, agreement on a uh, uh, on the gross financing needs, that they should not exceed 15% of GDP, and in the medium term it can go to 20% of GDP. So on a number of these topics we've made progress and reached an agreement, which I think is very helpful uh, for Greece because it also creates clarity on what is ahead. Um, but to have enough specifics on what we from the Eurogroup uh, could do in terms of debt relief uh, at the end of the program, if needed, uh, we need to do more work. Uh, the IMF has made absolutely clear that they still stand ready to go to the board, that it is their intention to go to the board, uh, but they uh, also uh, accept that we need to do more work to provide the kind of clarity uh, required. And as I've said, uh, very often it's about finding the right balance between what uh, people would uh, ask for or expect, expectations, and what at this point can be made available or made clear. Uh, those two have to be rebalanced, uh, and I'm sure that we can be successful if we take a little more time. Yes, please. 
Hi, um, Victoria Dendrino from Bloomberg. I just have two questions. Um, the first one is just on the role of the IMF. Is it still the case that before there's a disbursement, you want the IMF to participate, to go to the board, suggest a program and participate financially before there's any disbursement in the summer? And the second one is just on the primary surplus after 2022. First of all, is it 2022? And then after that, you mentioned the stability and growth pact. Does that mean that Greece will have to comply with the debt criterion as well? Thank you. Uh, that second question will go to the Commissioner who is in charge of uh, maintaining and guarding the pact. Uh, the first one is, uh, yes indeed it is our intention to bring the IMF on board, uh, as is very important to a number of member states uh, and the Eurogroup as a whole. Um, and um, yes, we are talking about a financial uh, program, a financial instrument from uh, the uh, IMF. Um, uh, and we want to do that at the latest, uh, as I said, in three weeks' time at the next Eurogroup. We were very close at getting that uh, tonight, uh, and I'm not just saying it, it's true, we were very close, uh, and we're just unable to manage it uh, tonight, so we will do more work on that. Uh, but yes, it is important that before the summer, the IMF uh, also formally becomes part of the program again. Nous avons, euh, j'ai aussi pu informer l'Eurogroupe des de la manière que, que, selon laquelle nous appliquerions euh, après 2022 les règles du pacte de stabilité et de croissance euh, concernant les déficits. Et ça nous amènera à des trajectoires qui doivent être encore précisées, mais qui sont beaucoup plus raisonnables que celles euh, qui courent jusqu'en 2022, euh, qui ne pourront pas être prolongées dans le temps. Pour ce qui concerne le critère de la dette, il relève euh, des euh, discussions que nous avons ici et aujourd'hui. Je voudrais profiter de votre question pour rappeler une autre chose qui n'a pas été évoquée pendant la réunion de l'Eurogroupe, mais que j'ai dite ce matin dans une autre conférence de presse, à savoir que la Grèce remplissait déjà les critères pour sortir de la procédure de déficit excessif, qu'elle était de manière sérieuse et durable en dessous de 3% du déficit. Nous avons jugé utile de différer la décision de sortir la Grèce de l'IDP, de la procédure de déficit excessif, à l'issue de nos discussions. Mais vous voyez bien que nous sommes là aussi sur un terrain ou sur une piste d'atterrissage qui est beaucoup plus raisonnable, avec une Grèce qui a fait les efforts et qui doit continuer à les faire, mais qui doivent être proportionnés à ce que recommande le pacte de stabilité et de croissance, qui n'aboutit pas du tout à des chiffres de l'ordre de 3,5%, mais je ne vais pas en articuler ici, car ça fait partie, là aussi, des discussions, ou en tout cas des paramètres sur lesquels nous devons ajuster nos décisions. Thanks. Uh, Jim Brunston from the Financial Times. Uh, is it possible just to give us a bit more detail on why you couldn't reach a deal this evening? Uh, we know that you know, there were very detailed compromises on the table. Who couldn't accept those, those compromises and why did they say they couldn't accept them? Thank you. Uh, no, I'm not going to give you more uh, details at this point uh, because I don't want to hamper my chances of reaching that final agreement in three weeks' time. So in three weeks' time, I will give you the details, not of who said what, uh, but of what the outcome uh, then is. Um, and as I said, in general terms, it's also very much about bringing together expectations and possibilities at this moment in time. Uh, and they seem to have deviated, and I think we need to bridge those again. Uh, Bryn Waterfield, Times of London. Um, <clears throat> almost exactly a year ago, um, you had what presumably wasn't an in-depth discussion on debt sustainability, and you put out a a statement you talked about the GFN uh, figure then a year ago um, you talked about EFSF uh, loan uh, maturities um, but just seemed to be lacking uh, the detail um, there so um, is that where the hang-up is and you talked about the 3.5 percent primary surplus figure could go down um, under the uh, growth and stability pact what two three percent 2.2%, 2%, 1.5% that the IMF wants. So how could, how low could it go uh, below 3.5%? Where's the hang-up? Is it on the loan maturities or is it still on um, this primary surplus figure? No, it's not on the primary surplus figure. We have uh, discussed the topic of giving more clarity starting from the agreement of uh, May. <coughs> you referred to the, uh, the package that was uh, outlined and agreed May last year, 
a number of measures were in that uh, package, but uh, we didn't specify what the size of that would be. Uh, we didn't put any figures in. So the IMF has then, a year ago, welcomed that statement and said, oh, well, that's very good, but we will need to have more specifics on what size it is. We have always said the final uh, decision from the Eurogroup on the size, the extent to which we will use these instruments will come at the end of the program, but we are prepared as far as we are possible at this point to give more clarity on how far we could go. And that's the kind of discussion we had, quite detailed uh, to what uh, size we could use the instruments available uh, in the package of last year. Uh, so we need to be specific, without putting a final figure on it, we need to be specific to give the IMF an idea how far we would be prepared to go, if needed. Uh, so that's quite a detailed uh, discussion, and we will do uh, more work uh, on that. Good evening, Mark Babercorn, Volska Netherlands. I'm still going to give it a try to push you a little bit more to clarity. Sure. One, the gap on the debt relief. Has it to do, at least, maybe you can tell us that, with the extending the maturity? Could you maybe specify how many years? Extending the grace period? Could you also maybe explain it a little bit? And th thirdly, uh, the primary surplus after the 3.5%, like Bruno asked, is it 2%, 2.5%, 1.5%, etc. And then a more political question for uh, the Commissioner. When you arrived here, you said Greece took its responsibility, now it's up to the Eurozone, uh, the Euro member states and the IMF to take its resp responsibility. Do you think they took it tonight? So on the uh, debt measures, if you remember in the uh, package of May last year, uh, a number of options were uh, put in the medium term measures, some of which are quite clear how big they can be. Uh, and for profits, etc., are defined numbers. That's what's going to be available in the following years in terms of uh, uh, and for uh, uh, profits that could be used. Uh, but particularly on the EFSF loans, it's open. We talked about, in that statement, about maturities and deferral of interest rate uh, payments. Uh, so those, yes, those are the two uh, uh, variables. And we were quite specific in discussing what could be done, if needed, but no conclusion today. Uh, coming here, I, I said that uh, I hope that we uh, could find a deal or approach a deal. We uh, didn't conclude today, but I think that the work that has been done uh, was very important um, and also very positive, and that we have really made progress and um, unprecedented progress. We have entered in detail here that we uh, never touched uh, here before. Uh, so, yes, uh, as I showed, by uh, recalling what the uh, 140 uh, prior actions are and where we are, the Greek authorities uh, are taking their responsibilities. And I think the partners of Greece are also taking their own responsibilities. Uh, and there has been a shared effort uh, to uh, narrow the gap between uh, positions. Uh, uh, we have not yet concluded, but I hope that under the guidance of the President of the Eurogroup, it will be possible in three weeks from now. It is work in progress. Hi, thank you. Uh, Alex Pigman from Agence France Presse. I had a question for you, um, Mr. Dysselbloom. Just, there's been a lot of uh, urgent talk about how the delay in these talks might be affecting the Greek economy and might be holding up the, the recovery and there's been problems that have been noted in recent weeks with the Greek economy. Um, do you feel that there's a sense of responsibility in the Eurozone that this is not getting resolved under the delays that, that we've been promised they'd be delayed, uh, that they'd be resolved? I think that sense of urgency is, uh, is felt uh, by the members of the Eurozone. That's why uh, counter perhaps to what they had intended some weeks ago, we do, did talk very specifically about the possible size and extent to which we would lengthen maturities, defer interest rates, etc. Um, and I think that was wise of the Eurogroup to enter into that debate. 
and to be specific and to show that we are seriously considering, if needed, this kind of measures. Um, and therefore, I'm also optimistic that we will get that agreement, because uh, I think that's the kind of uh, specificity that the IMF has asked for. Of course, also the IMF will have to accept some of the constraints that we have. The solution will have to be found within the May agreement. We're not prepared to go uh, beyond that, and we could use the instruments that are in that uh, agreement. And the final word on what the actual debt relief package is going to be, facts and figures, only come at the end of the program. Those are the two sort of frameworks that I have to work within. The IMF uh, will have to accept that, and I think that's possible. So that's what we're working on. Pablo Rodriguez El Mundo. Um, it's a different topic. Uh, today, the Eurogroup discussed the situation of the Spanish post program. Um, could you give give us a, a brief on how was the discussion, and in particular, if there was any uh, concern about the situation of the Spanish financial system right now, because there are some issues with some banks. I'm looking at my colleagues, because they have been to Spain, well, not them personally, but their teams have been to Spain, so perhaps they can say something. Oui, nous avons eu un point à l'Eurogroupe dont nous n'avons pas parlé. Nous nous sommes concentrés sur, sur la Grèce ce soir, qui est bien sûr ce qui a fait le, le menu de résistance. Euh, nous avons parlé de la mission de surveillance post-programme pour l'Espagne. Et si je dois résumer en très peu de phrases, je dirais que sans que nous soyons au bout du travail, nous estimons que, à tout point de vue, à la fois du point de vue des résultats, du point de vue de la mise en œuvre des réformes, du point de vue de la, justement du secteur bancaire et financier, les choses vont vraiment dans la bonne direction. Et nous avons pu exprimer à Louise de Guindos notre satisfaction et notre confiance. On Spain, uh, class regling. Yeah, let me just add that um, we did our normal early warning system together with the Commission going to Spain. We share the conclusions. Um, we always have to make sure that um, the repayments due to the um, ESM um, will be forthcoming. We have no doubts about that. That's good. But what might also be interesting is that Spain will continue to make voluntary early prepayments to the ESM. They already did four prepayments um, during the last two years, and Spain intends, and we have agreed with them, that they will prepay um, another three billion this year, one billion in June, and two more billion euro in November this year. And that will actually reduce the original amount. We dispersed um, initially 41 billion euro to Spain, will bring it down to 32 billion. And I think this is a good sign where how far Spain has come. They are able to prepay without any problem. It's also good for the ESM, because this money that's coming back earlier than anticipated will increase our lending capacity. Thank you. Eleni, very good from the last Katu question, I guess. Perhaps one more. That's it. Yep. OK. Um, can you uh, can you confirm that uh, that Greece was the one that blocked the proposal that was on the table, uh, saying that the IMF could uh, would participate on a program with money in 2018 when the debt would be would start to be sustainable? And uh, is there to make it absolutely clear, the IMF is uh, required to participate uh, in the program now with money on the table for the disbursement take place? If the IMF doesn't participate with money, will the disbursement be able to happen? I think that second question I already uh, answered. So we are, okay. our goal is to uh, bring the IMF formally on board. In other words, for them to go to the board, with positive advice and the board to take the formal decision to have a uh, part in the program involving money. Uh, and, and more detail, how much money, when, what, uh, I cannot give at this point. And First question I cannot answer because then I would, uh, I never tell you who has said what and taken what position in the Eurogroup. Ministers are at liberty to do so regarding their own positions if they want to say more, but I will not uh, go into what individual 
colleagues have said. Could, could that be, though, a scenario to have a promise by the IMF that they will participate with money in 2018 and that could be enough for the other parliaments in order to disperse? Um, I'm not going to answer that because I don't understand. Uh, the only thing I can repeat what I already said is very important for the Eurogroup that the IMF is part of the program. It has been our goal ever since the summer of 15 to bring them also formally on board. Yes, it would also involve uh, a financial instrument, a financial uh, program on the side of the IMF and uh, more details what that would look like, when it would come into effect, etc. I cannot give at this point. Athanasio, Cyprus News Agency. Uh, the 25th of May decision had another principle um, embedded, it embedded it to, into it that the, uh, any cost that would arise from the extension of the maturities, maybe the lowering of the interest rates or any buyback would be uh, a cost that would be, have to be compensated from the amounts existing in the program, the 86, uh, the ones that are left, plus the AMFAS and the SMPs. Uh, during today's discussion, did you feel at any point that maybe you will have to overcome that principle and uh, some parties may need to um, bear some costs that will not be dis uh, reimbursed to them? I mean, beyond that, uh, that horizon. And another thing, since the IMF is... Uh, it was a very complicated question already, so... <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> I hope the second one is a lot more simple. It, it's, it is simple, it is simple. The IMF is um, proposing a forecast horizon of many, many years, still asking for specificity. Did at any point raise the question of the long-term debt uh, restructuring measures today? Uh, on the second question, yes, that was also part. If you remember, uh, in our, the Eurogroup statement of May last year, we also spoke about a, a mechanism for the long term, uh, which could uh, work two ways. Things could get worse than expected. What happens then? <laughs> Things could go a lot better than now expected. <coughs> what would that mean in terms of debt relief? So that kind of mechanism... Uh, has been uh, discussed and will be discussed further. Your first question was very complicated. If the question is, are member states prepared from directly... No, don't give them the microphone again. <laughs> <laughs> Please. If your question is, are member states prepared or should they be prepared to directly from their national budgets make funds available uh, to compensate for the costs of interests, then the question is, no, that's not on the table, has not been. Uh, we've made it clear in the past that member states are not open to that kind of debt relief. So that is not possible. So we will continue uh, to work in uh, the coming uh, weeks. As I said, I think we are very close, and all parties involved have been extremely constructive today, and that makes me optimistic. Thank you.